Good afternoon. Welcome to the Speaker Showcase. I'm Scott Wheelwright. I'm looking forward to introducing to you the Trans-Pacific Aseptic Institute of Training. We are specialists in aseptic operations, in clean room management, in operator behavior, in engineering design, and quality compliance. And we'd like to share with you today a little example of how we do training. First of all, we have a partnership of three groups coming together to make this the best training program in Asia for aseptic operations. We have Alcia Biotech, which is the largest aseptic CMO in Asia. We have Complia, which provides international QA support. We have over 50 staff in our two offices in the US and Asia. And we have Clean Room Management Associates run by Anne-Marie Dixon, a very well-known name in the industry, providing our content. We offer many courses in the area of theory and practice at intermediate, ad beginning, and advanced theory. And we have operation and design of aseptic facilities for engineering team. And we offer detailed understanding of quality assurance and quality control for management and QA. I've um, given you a, a copy of our questionnaire, and I'd very much appreciate it if you could, could fill this out. If you'd like to stop by our booth at Hall 3, number D104, you can also obtain these, recommend these to your friends, along with a flyer showing our about us. We plan to have a drawing on Thursday. This is we are located in um, the province of Jiangsu and Zhejiang in China, which is the world's headquarters for fine silk. And we're offering this as a drawing, this fine silk scarf, authentic Suzhou silk, 100 euro value, and the winner will receive the prize by mail. So all you have to do is give us your address and name. So when we do training, we start with a pre-quiz. And we have this little device, this little device that each student gets. And from this, that you can input your answers. So we're going to start with this pre-quiz. And I want you to raise your hands and tell me, what is laminar airflow? First, is it where the air is well mixed? Is it where the air follows vertical or horizontal streamlines? Or is it where the air flows from the bottom of the room to the top? OK, so this is our first question. Second question, what is the EMA expectation for grade A clean areas? Is it laminar flow at the ceiling? Is it laminar flow at the work surface? Or is it laminar flow at the floor? So again, we offer this pretest as a way to understand and gauge students' level of understanding. Another sample question, which of the following is not a major contributor of particles in clean rooms? A, personnel, B, operations, or C, clean, cleaning programs? So with the student partition patient device, the students can input their answer, and then we tally automatically the results, and you see for the first question, what is laminar airflow? It's where the air follows vertical or horizontal streamlines. Okay, most of the students got this right. Some, some, some didn't. We, we keep track of each student's understanding, and we use this information to guide the course as it's delivered so that the instructor knows where to focus. Okay, I'm go now going to show you a video presentation, and we'll walk through this, and I'll narrate it as we go. First of all, laminar flow is where streamlines don't mix. So these blue bars represent flow patterns within the fluid. And you can see they go around an obstacle, but they don't mix around the obstacle. This is true laminar flow. If we look at turbulent flow, what we see is mixing, where the particles go back, mix early on. This is turbulent flow, a very common situation in most of what we deal with in life. 
The next clip shows you an actual filling line and a smoke pattern test. Actually, this is a biosafety cabinet. And here we have just dry ice in warm water. And we're looking at the flow pattern of the fog to see where it goes. Here you can see in the biosafety cabinet, this is designed to protect the operator from what's inside and to protect what's inside from what's out by the operator. You can see the airflow is to the front and then out the exhaust and to the back. As we hold it over the back, the airflow is out the back. We have good control of airflow in a well-designed piece of equipment. Even if we take the fog outside the equipment, we see that the flow is from outside into the exhaust and does not go into the area where the work is being done. So again, we're looking for protecting our containers, our drug, our product. Now in the next clip, we see a filling line. And again, in this case, we, we were using water vapor as our agent. And we're going to look at the vapor as it moves through the uh, laminar flow area over the filling line. And we see the streamlines go down and they go around the equipment and they don't mix. And this is very important that we don't have mixing, but we have streamlines and laminar flow everywhere through this, through this unit. So we go through now different parts of the filling line. We look at different um, areas and look at what is being, where the, where the airflow is in the different areas of the clean line. So the first part was the bottles em exiting the oven and then in the cooling turntable. This is part of the filling area, part of the um, conveyor belt. Again, the flow is always vertical from, from top to bottom and very smooth going around any obstructions. This is clean air, so it comes out at the top, it's filtered, it comes down, and it sweeps over our filling line and prevents any foreign particles from getting into our bottles. Here we see the vapor coming from underneath the, I mean, the, the vapor is being distributed underneath, but it's not getting up onto the bottles, it's always staying below and exiting out through the sides this means that our bottles stay clean, our vials stay clean, our syringes are not receiving foreign particles. Even around the enclosure, we see flow is from inside the enclosure to outside the enclosure. So this gives you an example of what we're trying to accomplish in an aseptic filling area. Here we see flow from the turntable to the sterile tunnel, again, from the flow does not come up onto the work area, but always remains moving particles away from the work area. Here is a, a glove port. Um, we, we have higher pressure inside the fill line area. The, the particles are moving outside, uh, again, away from the work area in order to keep our area clean. Even, even right over the bottles, you see, again, in the operation, we have filtered air, so we have no particles. They come down, they sweep over the bottles, pushing particles away so that we have a very clean work area. Even, so even on the filling line, even where we have automated uh, hand, handling equipment, uh, you'll see in this next clip, you'll see that the the air flows around the equipment if the equipment is designed so that it does not bring particles into our clean area. Here's the, the bottles on the line. Again, they're being swept by clean air to prevent any turbulence or, or particles from coming back up into the bottles. Here we are looking at some equipment uh, for installation. You see the operator, see how he behaves. He moves very slowly. He's very deliberate in his actions. This is the way it should be. He's going to make a connection. And, he, and always the parts that need to be sterile are kept clean by the sweeping flow of air 
going over them. This is, um, here's the pick and place machine. You notice that these, this equipment is even designed so that it turns at an angle to give a minimum presentation to the air so there's no hindrance and no um, turbulence generated by the equipment. Uh, in the next clip, we look at actually CD manufacturing in the electronics industry. It's the same as in the pharmaceutical industry. Our goal is, again, keeping things clean. Okay, I also want to show you a little bit more about operators. So here is around the equipment and see how it, it flows around the equipment. Okay, here's our, next is our CD manufacturing equipment. Again, these, these need to be very clean. Uh, this is automated equipment, um, but we always have good flow around the equipment, past the work surface, and so on. Now, if we look again at operators, operators need to be trained. They need to know what they're doing. So this is the typical human body, the airflow is generated, we have heat. This is typical particles coming off of a, a, a body. The operator, however, is trained so that as the air comes down over his body, he doesn't disturb it, and it washes away all these particles. Operators are a major source of contamination in clean rooms. Here we see some bad behavior. See how when he, he shoves his arm through and blocks things with his body, it causes turbulent flow. This is not what we want. What we want is when the operator comes in, he sits down carefully, he, he doesn't use sudden movements, he, he works at his workstation, and you see the air moves around him and retains its laminarity. We have a problem when workers come in and use violent movements, then this is not the way it should be. Okay, so that's our video presentation. So now, at the end of the training, we have a quiz. Okay, and now we're gonna see what did you learn. So, which type of airflow has less risk for product contamination during filling operations? Laminar, A, or B, turbulent? Okay. What is, oh, turbulent flow increases the risk of contamination because why? A. It increases potential for particles to be distributed onto the product, or B, it flushes particles away from the product, or C, it's more comfortable for operators. So, number three, interactive training improves my understanding a lot, some, or not at all. Okay. I want to sign up for this training course. Definitely yes, uh, maybe yes, and so on. Okay, so here's the results. So. Yes, of course, everybody wants to sign up for the course because it, it brings involvement, okay? That's our goal. And those of you who've worked in Asia understand how difficult training can be. We keep our students involved and enthusiastic about the process, okay? We also get much more information than just who got the answers right. Uh, we can issue a certificate. Uh, we have all these reports we generate and so on. So I thank you very much for your attention and happy to answer any questions. And don't forget to fill out the um, yellow sheet and if you give it to Alex here, Alex, can you raise your hand? Then um, before you leave, thank you very much.